back, relax, maybe get yourself a snack. Me and you gonna have a little chat about books. And then we are going on to the second one in the series, which is The Great Hunt. This one continues the story of the same characters, but I'm not going to give any spoilers away. But let's get into the editions that we already know and see how they've changed from the first to the second book. The first one, which was the original publication again, published by Tor, and this one has artwork by Daryl K. Sweet again. It was published in 1991 and has 705 pages. And again, it's a mass market paperback. This one has three main characters we get I think Rand who is holding this sort of trumpety horn thing then we get a young lady and another rather broad tall fellow who I'm imagining could be loyal I'm not sure he doesn't look that human so let's put it that way he could be loyal in the background also I don't know if you can see but there is a very small figure who I'm guessing is a Trolloc Trollocs are the bad guys of this series or at least in the first few books they definitely are the bad guys and they are kind of like a cross between various animals and ogres and trolls and all sorts of horrible things that you could imagine is kind of thrown into a trolloc. That I think is a trolloc in the background so I like that small reference which is really nice. The typography on this one has a more metallic foil blocked feeling than the first one. The first one I said felt very very flat. This one has more of an embossed raised feeling which I think is good. Obviously the small typography of book two of the Wheel of Time is still too small and too simple and it doesn't pop but the main title is now looking good. It pops out and there's a black behind it which I think really helps it to stand out and that's another technique that you guys can use when you're designing things. Putting black behind the type to make it pop makes it really interesting. We've also got Robert Jordan's name in the corner which is in white. Again it doesn't pop as much as it could, potentially they could have put a background behind that as well but that might have darkened the image so maybe a lighter background would have been better. However as a whole I think this one works better in terms of combining the image and the type. On the original artwork there's actually more Trollocs in the corner which I think is really creepy and cool. They're kind of sneaking up on our main characters which I like because that definitely happens a lot in the book. We have this kind of wooded really nice landscape. I have to say Daryl K. Sweet's illustrations of landscapes. I do really like his landscape drawing. I think he's very very good at depicting landscapes. Figures I find a little bit harder to believe because they're painted and it's very obviously painted. They're not realistic enough to be photography. But I do think as an artwork I would still buy the artwork. As a cover and a whole I think this one is better than the first but I still don't love the combination of type and image in the way that they've done it. I think the image is nice. I don't think that the cover works as a whole for me personally. I know a lot of people are going to disagree because these are the additions that they have and they love them but for me I just don't think the whole cover works in the way that I would want it to in order to go out and own them. Moving on then to the second one in the Wheel of Time, this one I just wanted to show you guys the small strip on the back again of Daryl K. Sweet's work. You just don't get very much of it but you just get this small slither which references the original which again I really like that about these editions. So the second one is the one that I own by Orbit. It was published in 2006. It again has the artwork of Lee Gibbons and Daryl K. Sweet, a combination of Lee Gibbons on the front and Sweet on the back once again. And it has 707 pages and again it's a mass market paperback. This one I really like the green. I love that colour of green. I think it's really really vibrant and I think it's a really nice balance between dark and light because it feels like a bit of both. It doesn't feel like it's too dark, it doesn't feel like it's too light and I just think that the design of these is really really cool. It has a kind of cog wheel at the bottom and then the snake biting its own tail which is definitely a major part. I just feel like the darkness and the creepiness of the black makes these covers really lovely as I said before and I think as a series they work really really well. The type I love, it's balanced, it's even, it stands out even though it's very simple, it's not raised, it's not embossed, it's not 3D, it still stands out because of the black background. So would I buy this one? Definitely I do own them as you guys already know. Moving on then to the Kindle books which I said before the artwork on each of these is done by a different artist. This one was published in 2009 by Tor, 742 pages, it's the Kindle edition and the artwork on this one specifically is by Kikai Kotaki. And I definitely think that the Trollocs on this one are scarier than the Trollocs on the original Daryl K. Sweet designs. 
this Trolloc is not looking too happy. He's in the centre of the frame. He comes in from the side. He's got a muzzle that's very, very large in frame. And I don't like the look of him. I wouldn't like to come across him in the night, which is exactly what some of our main characters are definitely doing. In the back of the frame, we can see them. As they walk along. One of them's holding up the horn. I'm presuming, again, that this one is Rand. I'm not sure, though. And then we've got a few other main characters, too. And I definitely think that this one has a more ethereal, fantastical feeling because of the picture of the Trolloc right at the forefront. I do like this artwork more than I like the first one of the Kindle editions. I definitely think this one is a nicer one overall and I like the ethereal white tones we've got going on in the background. I think that's really fantastical. Again, I love the balance of type as you guys know. So would I buy this one? I probably would buy this one. I think this one is a nice illustration overall and it works better for me in terms of referencing the story than the first one does. Then of course we have the same version of the illustration put into a new layout and a new format and this is the paperback versions which were published in 2012 by Tor and this one has 656 pages. Again it's the same artist, it's the same artwork but I think that the colour of the blue in this one works really well with the image as opposed to the red of the first one not working so well with the image. I think that the blue gives a darker tone and it's more like it's night time and things like that, which it definitely seems to be in this image. I don't know, I just like this colour blue, I think. Maybe that's why I like this cover more. But I do really enjoy this cover as a whole, and I think this one is nicer. Again, I would probably buy this. It's more for the illustration. The illustration definitely is what's raising this one in terms of the first one and this one comparison. I think the illustration of this one just works better for me overall. I think it's a nice cover, and I love the style and layout of it, and the illustration works, which it didn't on the first but it does on this. Then we have the continuation of the really newly released ones in 2014 by Orbit and this one is a paperback with 720 pages. Again I really like the way that they fade the rings into the background using a darker colour of the colour of the background. So we've got the green of the background that's quite a mossy green and then we've got a darker mossy green for the actual rings. I like the fact that the rings are not in the centre, they're cut off. It's quite a disjointed design but it works really really well which is quite unusual. It just seems to flow really fluidly and the type you've got the great hunt, it just flows really well which is nice to see. Again you've got the title of Robert Jordan's name at the bottom without anything behind it so you can very clearly see who it's by and the colour that they've used fits with the type generally. It just works. It works better than the first one as well I think because it has more of similar tones than the first one. The first one the red stands out maybe a little too much whereas this one it's got more similar tones throughout and I like it a lot more so again if I wasn't already collecting them in the other editions I would buy this one and I do like this edition of them. Then we move on to the Italian depiction from Fenucci. This one was published in 2006. It has 708 pages and it is a paperback. It's the continuation of the one I showed you guys for the Eye of the World. This one again we've got a character holding up a horn so I'm guessing by now you guys can probably realise that a horn is a pretty essential part of book two. I'm not going to say why or anything like that but there is a horn in there for sure. We've got the similar character that we saw on the earlier covers I showed you guys. This one kind of harks back to the earlier illustration by Sweet which I think is really nice. These definitely seem to be like reimaginings of Sweet's work, which I like a lot. And I do like the pastel tones of this one, I think it's a nice colour scheme. Again, we've got this kind of white ethereal background going on, and I think this one works, but I don't like it as much as I like the first one in this series. So again, maybe that's just me, I don't know, I would love to hear what you guys think of all of these. But I personally prefer the first one in the Fenucci editions than this one. Then we come back to some of my favourite ones, which are the Portuguese covers by Bertrand. And this one was published in 2007 and has 738 pages. This one I love. I love the colour scheme of this one. I think the colours of these ones are fantastic. They are so bright, so vibrant. The black behind really makes them pop out, which is great. It's very ethereal. It has kind of this repeated pattern of a sort of star of a sword and it's very very cool. It just looks awesome, it looks really cool and I don't know why this gets me but I don't think it looks like Wheel of Time but I think it looks cool. Again it has a more of a sci-fi feeling to it, I think that's just because it's kind of these ethereal lines instead of solid lines. But I really do like the placement of the text, I think the text is bold, it stands out well enough and it looks really clean and nice. I just don't think it fits with the Wheel of Time but I love the way that they've interpreted it and the way that they've kind of brought it to a modern audience with modern designs and modern pops of colour as opposed to a more illustrative style which we've seen before in 
the 90s editions. So I do really like this, I probably would buy it if it was another series, Wheel of Time probably not, but as I say like I really like these editions, I think they're really nice images and I think they're very interesting to look at because they're so different to all of the other interpretations of the series. Then we move on to a 2014 edition which is by Intrinsica again, this is 704 pages and it's the Brazilian Portuguese paperback. This one is a red version of the original that we saw in kind of gold, so they've gone for red for the second one whereas the UK versions have gone for green, but they've got the same idea, it's still the snake biting its own tail with the wheel and things like that, they just have a much more metallic heavy feeling to it which I like. As I said I really like the first one so this one's not too dissimilar, it's just a different colour and I definitely would buy these, I think they look really really nice, really stylish and it's just a very slight difference between this one and the editions that I have so why wouldn't I like it? I obviously think they're really really cool, I love the way that they're balanced, they look really harmonious in composition and I even think that the little logo in the corner fits in with the design so it looks really nice, I like the fact that they've changed the logo, the dot of the eye on the logo to fit the colour that they've used for the background, that's a really nice touch and that's just the sort of thing that some publishers don't think about but they obviously have and I think that's really good. Then we have a 2012 release by Phantom Print, this one is a hardcover and it's a Czech hardcover and it's 464 pages so this is Czech as I've said, this one really really reminds me of Lord of the Rings, it reminds me of the elves in Lord of the Rings straight away just by looking at it, it has the long blonde hair which is very stereotypically elven, I just think it looks really really similar to the Lord of the Rings which is okay because they're both classic fantasy but this one doesn't have any elves in it so I'm not sure why they want to reference it. He's got this badass sword on his back, there's these flying eagerly things that are coming in, I hate the combination of the green and the yellow on the banner at the top, I don't think that works, I really don't like that combination. We have this little banner at the bottom as well, I feel like this one's a little bit trying too hard, let's put it that way. The image is overly dramatic, it's overly intense, it's right in your face and it's this figure kind of glancing back over his shoulder which I don't love so much but I think they have definitely tried to emanate some of the things from the story, it just hasn't worked in the way that I would like it to. I think it's too elven in design, it doesn't feel like the Wheel of Time, it feels like a reimagining of Lord of the Rings. The colour of green with the kind of gradient that's going on, I don't love that colour combination, the satiny gradient that they've got showing, it just doesn't work for me unfortunately. The typography is kind of metallic and it's very very skinny so it actually looks quite bad because you can't see all the details of the metallic which is a shame. If it was larger, fatter text it would have shown up the details of that metallic effect a lot better, that would have been something I would have changed if I was designing it. Would I buy this one? Definitely not, I don't think this one is for me, I don't really like it, but I would love to know if you guys have a different opinion and if I'm getting it completely wrong definitely let me know your thoughts. And then finally I have another one in the Spanish series by Tim and Mass and this is the second one in their editions which was published in 1991 in hardback and it's 558 pages and it's Spanish obviously. I actually really like this one, I think that the realistic depiction that they're going with here is really really working, I think the lady standing there with the ship on fire works really really well, it just looks really like an interesting image that I would instantly want to pick up and find out why what is going on. Again the type really fades into the background, they've made a mistake on the typography on this one, unfortunately it just fades in too much into that darkness in the clouds behind, if they'd left the whole sky this kind of lighter colour it would have worked but because there's a darkness behind the title it recedes into that and we can't read it very well which is a shame because it's the title, it's an important part of the design. The figure though and the illustration I think does work a lot nicer on this one, I prefer it to the first one and I think it's really interesting interpretation of the story again, I love the silky facets of her gown, I think that works really well and it just is painted beautifully, it's a beautiful illustration, so I definitely prefer this one. Would I buy it if the typography was sorted out? Yes, otherwise no, but I do like this one for sure and I think it's a very very nice interpretation. So those are all of the covers, I think that's 21 different covers or so to show you guys, so there's a lot of them. I would love to know which ones are your favourite for both The Eye of the World and The Great Hunt and why, which ones are your favourite and why because I know I like the simplistic ones a bit more instead of the illustration but there are some illustrations which really pop and really capture the image and the vision that I get when I'm reading the book so I think those ones work better. I would love to know if you like any of the foreign covers, if there are any that if they were in English would you buy them and just generally any of your thoughts about any of the books I've mentioned 
if there are any additions that you guys own that are completely different to the ones I've mentioned and I haven't even known about them or heard about them, definitely send me a link to a picture or something like that because I would love to see them. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you like the fact that Cover Chat is back. If you like this series and you like the way that I've talked about the Wheel of Time books and you want me to do the rest in the series, I'm definitely open to doing that, but I would love you guys to let me know that in the comments because it's going to be a lot of work, obviously, but I would love to do it if you guys want me to. Thank you all for watching and I will see you all very, very soon in another video. Bye! Me and you gonna have a little